Hello everybody, welcome back to Padfoot TD Games. My name is Zach, I'm the voice behind the icon, and man does it feel good to actually be saying that and be back with you guys. I haven't recorded a video in for what seems like so long, but hello. And welcome to a new one for us and hopefully a new series. Everybody, this is Virtual Sailor Next Generation. Now this is one of my all-time favorite games, and you're like, wait, I'm looking at this tree and it looks like crap in this building why is there a building in the water it's because this was made by one person it was originally a team one uh, for vehicle simulator that's that was the brainchild of this and now it is into the sailing world and all these maps that you'll be seeing are fan creation mods all the ships are fan creation mods and as you already know we are going to be piloting the beautiful Disney Wonder. Now, out of the two original ships, the Disney Wonder and the Disney Magic, the Disney Wonder is um, the one that I've been on the most. <clears throat> I've been on the Magic a bunch, but as in recent years, uh, the Disney Wonder has been our biggest one. We've been to Hawaii, twice to Alaska, um, obviously small four-day and, and five-day cruises, and this is where Danielle and I actually got engaged, was on board. So... The reason why I'm like, oh, why does it look like crap? Well, it, it's 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 not meant to be a fully fleshed out game. They don't have that kind of funding. But with all the mods and everything, it gives you a scale world to travel around to. Now, before we board the ship and we look around and I can show you all the fun things, and yes, of course, there is a horn. I want to tell you what we're going to be doing in this series. This series, we're actually going to be doing... Uh, the cruise schedules that they are um, doing currently for Disney Cruise Line. Um, <clears throat> on the Disney Magic, the Disney Wish, the Disney Dream, the Disney Wonder, and the Disney Fantasy, and eventually the Disney Treasure. I want to be able to show you guys the world that's here. I love the sailing. I've been playing this game pretty much every day since I found out that the game existed, that I could get the Disney ships in there, and that I could literally go through the world. I've been playing it every day following the exact itinerary. We're not going to do that. I'm going to show you just the itineraries. When the Disney Wonder goes up to Alaska, we'll do the Alaska. If they have a special Alaska, we'll do that. When they go to Hawaii, we'll do that. You know, but we're, it's not going to be like a daily video of here's what every ship's doing, because <laughs> I think that will get boring. But for this one, I'm very excited because this is our inaugural one on the very first ship that I was on. I did a four-day cruise in 2003. Um, 2003 or 2002, I think it was actually 2002, here on the Disney Wonder, and our family has been hooked ever since, and we've been doing them for many, many a years. So, before I show you around kind of what you do, um, a couple things that I want you to know about the game. It is a scale one to war on the world. It does run in real time. You do have the ability to speed up time. You can obviously teleport from place to place, but where is the fun in that, especially if you're trying to get fuel values, uh, anything with weather, anything like that, you want to make sure that you're keeping it in real time. And of course, we don't have seven days to be able to make you a video, so I will be speeding up time. I think how I'm going to structure these videos, a lot of it is probably going to be um, <clears throat> one or two days for um, the cruise, because I want you to be able to know that, like, for our current uh, voyage. We are actually in San Diego, by the way. I didn't say that. <laughs> that would be leaving from San Diego, having a day at sea, going to Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, um, having another day at sea, going to Ensenada uh, in Baja, California, Mexico. And then we'll be back in San Diego. Um, so probably first video is probably going to be leaving, first day at sea. Second video is probably going to be going into Cabo San Lucas. Um, maybe day, day at sea, then going to Cabo San Lucas. Uh, and probably leaving? I haven't exactly figured out how I want to structure these out yet because, again, I don't know how long they're going to take. So it could be, this is us arriving, this is us leaving. I'm going to figure out as we go, and it, this first one might feel a little choppy because I might have to chop up how we're going to do it, and I want to see what you guys want as well. So let's jump in here really quick and let me show you the world. So we are here in San Diego and come through the channel and ooh, click in the map. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> do this every day, but I got lost. So, yeah, San Diego, Ensenada, Los Angeles. Now, <clears throat> you're going to notice that, oh, there's probably a lot more ports. These are the ones that are done by fans. So this is what I have currently. Each one of these is a regional map that has its own island system inside of it. 
So, of course, you know, you come over here and you've got the Leeward Islands. So you've got St. Kitts, St. Croix, St. Martin, St. Thomas, Tortola. You've got San Juan. You have uh, the Dominican Republic. You have Grand Cayman. You have Aruba. You have Jamaica. Obviously, everything here, Castaway Key, Port Canaveral, each one of these is fan-made. And there's one big person that I have to think on this, and that would be, let me actually get, get it correctly here. I'll probably put it down below. Um, it's Rob's Fishing Vessels. <coughs> Sorry. Rob's Virtual Sailor? Ah, whatever this is. Rob's VSF add-ons dot Weebly dot com. I'll make sure that I get one down there. But as I'm looking through here, this is where I got um, and I will be getting more of all of our scenery. Um, it, it, it's where I got the Disney ships. So you can see where these maps are and you can see where you want to go. There are a handful of people that actually make these mods, but this is the best person. Um, I do believe that he's also a Disney fan, so that's why Disney, Castaway K, and everything is out there. Um, you can go up, we're going to be going up here to Alaska, we're going to be going to Hawaii. The, he does have some stops for Australia when the ship goes there, so we're really going to be focusing on Disney Cruise Line because that's what's near and dear to my heart. Um, but really, it's in real time, uh, which is the coolest thing uh, to be able to do. So I want to be able to show you, you can obviously drive the ship yourself, you can also set up autopilot. Now for ease and for me being able to make comments and stuff like that, we are going to be using uh, autopilot. Now, you probably won't be using autopilot while you're in the harbor, so I may or may not use this track on the way out. But this is just me being able to keep in mind of where I want to go. So you have the ability to um, activate and deactivate autopilot at your leisure. You're able to control the speed as well. I'll show you what that menu looks like here in a second. But I want to be able to say, yep, we're out at sea. I'm going to pop out to about here. And we are going to go down the coast. Is it exactly how Disney's doing it? No, but again, there's not a detailed enough map for me to be able to do that. And I know that Colva San Lucas is actually right here. So, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to just plot our course. So, <clears throat> there you have it. Now, if I was to put on autopilot after uh, unmooring and turning the ship around, it would get us right down here. What I need you to know is that, one, uh, autopilot does not stop. If you hit your last destination and it checks off, it'll just keep going. It'll just keep going straight. So it's not like it stops in the destination. Up, oh, you're there. You still have to be in control. So it really is just a, hey, you're here, pay attention kind of thing. Uh, you do have the ability to move your selected items. I'm going to just move this one a little bit closer to the coast. We're keeping it pretty close. Um, just because of how how fast we're going to be able to go down there. The only other thing that I really use on here is moving map, and that will move the map with the ship, um, which helps a lot with channel passages, uh, specifically up here in Alaska, um, which I'm very excited about. But yeah, there is your map feature. Autopilot. Just press A for that. These are your autopilot controls. If we were to turn on, the ship will start to drive itself and uh, just literally head on out to uh, to see uh, and you have the ability to adjust your speed which would be here and if you're doing course you could do it via there uh, what else oh Y um, would be oh right 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 okay I, I, I was like wait wait why does this not look right um, I'll explain that here in a second um, Y would be what you call the weapons panel if you're doing a, a vehicle that had weapons on it for the Disney Cruise Line, this is actually where their horns are located and the uh, pre-ship announcement and the emergency drill that we'll be using uh, when we <coughs> depart will actually be in here. Now you're like, why is this not populated now? It's not populated literally because um, for me to be able to get this view and be able to walk around here on the ground like I am, um, I'm not on the ship. I'm not connected to the ship. So <laughs> that is why. When we get back on the ship, it'll show up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's very exciting. And, and another thing that I want to be able to point out is that the game is optimized in certain areas. 
So I have everything up pretty high. I have uh, actual water displacement, real weather, real tides, um, shadows, you know, complex arrays. Because again, you know, this isn't a complex texture, but you know, when you get on the ship, you'll see the, you could see everything, and you know, it, it loads in. So San Diego is the only place that I've gotten 25 to 30 FPS. Everywhere else is 100 plus. So as we get out of here, it will become a little less populated and should uh, should go fine, I should say. Um, there is a quick loading screen that'll pop up when you switch sceneries. Literally, it's about 20 seconds, if that, so it really doesn't take you out of it that much. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited about this, guys, and I hope you guys are too. It's definitely a series I'm going to make regardless if it's a high reception or not, because look at Ever since I was a young kid and I first sailed on the ship, I had been obsessed with Maritime. Actually, I had been obsessed with Maritime since the Titanic. I studied the Titanic as a child. Not as a teenager, as a child. I was checking out sixth grade books, like level books, about the Titanic when I was in fourth grade. It has been an obsession of mine ever since. And then when we first got to Cruise, I've been obsessed with Disney Cruise Line ever since. So this game here, even though it kind of looks like a potato... This is my dream game. This is the game I wanted forever. I've played all the ship simulators that have come out. I have modded as much as I possibly can in ship simulator by V-Step, which is just adding the Disney horn, but being able to live it. But being able to have this game, be able to drive these ships, to be able to go to the destinations that I know and I, I've, I've watched over my lifetime, this is a dream come true. So... I think, without further ado, let's just take a look, walk along our ship. Now, when we're walking here, unfortunately, it's not super smooth because it. it <laughs> I'm meant to be able to travel the whole entire globe in this, so I've got to go a little bit slower. But look at that, beautiful. The it, there are lights that are built in that'll light up, which is very very nice. Ship is bouncing a little bit. I think we're having a little collision issue um, with uh, the the stern here. So, um, that's, that's that. Uh, of course, a, a couple things is I'm, I'm going to try to keep it semi-realistic. There's a good point of that I can't all the time. It literally just lifted me up and over and placed me up in the sky uh, from the gangway. So, it's going to be semi-accurate as much as I possibly can. Um, but really, this one's just about having fun. Now, there's a couple things that I have notes on this vessel. Um, I think on his notes here... Uh, Rob was not the first one to make this ship. Um, this was something from 2007 that came out um, by Miguel Murdoch. Um, he took it, he revamped um, the Disney uh, magic in the Disney Wonder and uh, put it into uh, Virtual Sailor Next Gen. Back down on the ground. I've never actually had that issue before, so that's kind of funny. Uh, and then if you know anything about Disney, here on the back, yeah, so this is where our clipping is. So the more line keeps on getting tight, you can see where it's, so it doesn't want to come any further, so it's pushing the front in. Uh, unfortunately, some of the maps have small quirk issues like that, and some work beautifully. So it really kind of comes to uh, how your brain can function with it, uh, and, and what you want to do to keep in the realism. Of course, the emblem back there, the duck tail as well, or the beaver tail. What do you guys call it? I've, I've heard both. Um, I think it's a duck tail. Uh, added on for uh, better aerodynamics. And again, there's there's a couple issues. Like, when this got added, you can see where it has been added. Uh, and it cut to a nose and a half. So, there's that. A couple small quirks, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to end up floating again, aren't we? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll float. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> can't can't be perfect all the time so um yeah super excited about this um one of the other things that you'll see is some of the docks that we'll come to aren't actually solid objects and i'm putting quotes around that so you, we'll have four uh mooring lines uh one on each side of the ship just to be able to keep that so i think it's time let's climb on board this magnificent vessel and uh let's start somebody's vacation i think that's that's the best part is we're making other people's dreams come true. So we're going to head in here, go up the gangway. Oh, you are bouncing a lot. Oh, man. Why are you bouncing so much? Hate that. 
Ah, I'll probably just throw out another rope. But let's climb on board, and I'll show you guys what we can see. All right, hello, San Diego, sitting out there, looking beautiful as always. We have boarded the ship. We are up here on deck ten. Uh, to be able to walk around. And what's nice about some of these ships, and some that you'll see when we don't do a Disney series, um, will be above and beyond, you'll notice, in their design. But this one you can tell um, a little bit cheaper on the graphics, but again, I'm, I'm driving the Disney Wonder. It, it looks correct enough to me to be happy. So we got the adult pool area. <clears throat> I do like that at least one of the radar um, do spin. We've got the sports deck up here. Um, I am technically on the ship now, so I'm able to actually walk at a walking speed, which is just fantastic. And again, there's no railings up front. There's, there's a handful of things that's like, oh, it takes me out of it just a smidge. But again, the ability to drive this ship is, is above and beyond for me. Um, we always, when we're sailing away, we'll come right up here. Should be right about here. And this is our view the whole entire time as we usually leave. We're always up here watching the bow as we go. Um, you can actually kind of see where there's actually glass here, because there's actually glass there in real life. Um, so that's kind of cool. Figure we'll walk around really quick, kind of show you a deck tour. Um, and then we will get ourselves to the bridge and we'll head out of here. So this one's going to be a little bit longer, of course, because I, I just need to be able to explain the game to you guys. Um, and just the ability to do this and walk around and go to these places. You're going to hear me all the time. This is me fangirling. I am just so happy. You know, I, I, again, a couple things is like, okay, well, there is glass here, but there's the white rods. They're actually in the back. You know, it, it, it's good enough for me. Ooh, why am I looking up? Look down. There you go. <laughs> um... So yeah, walking up here uh, on the regular deck. Of course, also looking over at San Diego. Uh, we do have the military base over here. We have the airport over here. We're heading back here to the uh, family pool. And I know that's an unnatural amount of smoke that's going to be coming out of the stacks and gets more as you drive. Just part of it. Just part of it. <laughs> uh, coming up here to the family pool area, Pinocchio's Pizzeria here, uh, the dance floor, and of course their screen with the Disney Wonder logo on there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm glad that they kept this ship closer to the original than the Magic. Um, the Magic has always been my home ship, has been the one that's near and dear to my heart, but unfortunately with the addition of the water slide um, that comes off of the first funnel, it ruins a lot of the aesthetic for me. Here's the new Mickey pool here at the kids pool area water slide included um, again just, it's just some of the coolest things we're gonna just float over here break some of the realism so I can uh, be able to see some of this of course yeah I got your pal Mickey Mouse there so again it's so cool um, one of the things you know that everybody would like oh, I'd love to see which maybe we'll do a Minecraft video because people have been able to do that it's the interior this game has struggles right now running as it is as you can see um, I've never had a crash. Well, actually, I guess I've had a crash a couple times, but I know why. Um, a lot of people are like, wow, I wish there was an interior. Here's the interior, guys. It's there. You can access it. Like, it's just not wow. I want to come and see what this was. Because I've come in here before, because, again, my first thing was like, okay, how much is actually detailed? Oh, it's extra portholes. That's funny. Oh, no, it's actually not extra portholes. These are the exterior lights. I'll show you that in a second, actually. So let's do this. I'm going to pop outside of the ship just here right now. And there she is in all of her glory. You can see that I put out extra mooring lines just to keep us from, you can see where it wants to bap into the side. The problem is when it doesn't find it as a real object or it's a little too low, the ship will actually start to climb this and flip over. So always going to be kind of cautious on that. But but look at this. You know, as you get close up, you'll start to see some of, like, the imperfections and stuff like that. But from a distance, this is amazing. One of the things that the first thing that I did was I, I took this ship and I brought it to Hawaii. I wanted to see, like, how, how much time had passed, da-da-da-da-da. And I brought it to Hawaii. 
and I brought it to Mount Willy Willy, which was our last stop in Hawaii just last year. Um, and I was able to almost perfectly recreate a picture that I took. I'll throw it in here at some point um, of us getting onto that vessel. So that was one of the coolest things. Now, what I was talking about inside the lights, there's a couple quick keys that are coming really handy. W is obviously for weather. This is where you can update uh, real weather. Update real weather. We'll keep that. It's set to the actual time that's out in San Diego right now. There are time zones that you have to remember. You've obviously got map. Um, and the other ones is docking. This is D. Um, a couple of ships have built-in pieces. Um, one of the ones that this one does is it has the spotlights that are on the side. They don't read as much as I think that could be good. Um, you also have the lighting menu that you can turn on. So this is when the ship's lights are on. If you hold Shift and L, Shift D, and stuff like that, it'll automatically do um, a bunch of stuff for you. So this one's just all lights, as can go through there. The funnels are really bright, but it's still pretty nice. All right, so let's—that's um, the outside looking pretty good. Let's pop back into the bridge, which I hadn't set up yet, which we are here. So we have a couple default views where you can also walk around at our leisure to be able to go from place to place. Um, but we have uh, the starboard side wing, the port side wing, and here at the main controls inside. Now I'm going to probably adjust some of these cameras over time, but this is the gist of it. Uh, this also gives you some of the interactable displays that are here, including your autopilot, <coughs> and this is the horn catalog over here. So let me just pop over here and show you what we have. So we have the horn itself, which can be fired from here. We have the horn announcement, which includes the Disney chime, as well as the muster drill, um, which is just literally just a siren going off, um, recorded from the Disney magic. So what I think I'm going to have us do first is I'm looking here. This ship would depart at 4 p.m., so I'm breaking a little bit of the magic here. Let's go a little bit before that. This would be before this. This would probably be at 3.30, but we are going to do the mustard drill. So let's fire that now. You can hear where it gets really, really quiet. I don't know why this one's so quiet. Seven short, seven short blast followed by one long blast. Now... That's completed. We are close enough to 4 o'clock. We have everybody aboard. What I am going to do is I'm actually going to bring up the controls by pressing P. You could use some of these here, um, but they're not always exactly very clear on which ones are which, so I always find it easier. Pop that right up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect all the moorings with Shift D. I'm going to start with the stern. 30% of the bow thrusters, we are going to push ourselves away from the dock. i to make sure that our engines are set at zero. So you're going to slow us down a bit. We were in reverse a little bit because I was doing some movement behind the camera. So push away just a smidge. Enough where wind wouldn't push us back in. If you go up to 100, by the way, they are way too fast. What the actual um, bow thrusters and stern thrusters would be. Hit spacebar to reset here. Five and six are your engine controls. So this is your back and this is your forward. So we're going to do back two. And we are going to imagine that the sail away party is happening on the deck right now. And we are going to count it down. Five, four, three, two, one. Anybody who is a fan of Disney Cruise Line loves the horn. It's the best feature that's here, and it just puts a smile on my face. And if you happen to be a cruising fan of Disney Cruise Line, that is one of your favorite things as well. Don't like to usually speak for people, but come on. A lot of people hate it. I also want to be very clear on that. People hate that horn. <laughs> I just, I love it. I love it. Um, the game is also a little funny. You know, I'm going to play it one more time. So, 
it does have a distance range to it. But what I do find funny, you can hear it there. If you move the camera too fast, it'll distort. I just find that really funny. So the Disney Wonder is setting sail from San Diego for a beautiful five-night round trip Baja cruise from San Diego with the theme of Easter. So we're going to back ourselves out of here. Going to keep on going. Should be around five knots. Six knots is okay. Depending on the port is how much they're going to let you go for speed as close you are to the dock. We're going to be backing up and spinning ourselves 180. So we're going to start letting ourselves drift here a little bit. Again, the physics are a little wonky, unfortunately, so it's not like, you know, momentum's exactly the way it would be, you know, if I went off the, the gas and it'd be the same exact stop time. Things like that. Um... What is nice is that they do have the real cruising speeds in here. The cruising speed for the Disney Wonder is 22 knots with a high of 25 and 26 when needed. One thing that I do like here is the water looks very pleasant. It's this, you know, I'll take the frame drops here in San Diego for what this looks like. This is beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're still backing up a little bit. You can use the map. You can also use the sonar that's in there, but use the map. This is relatively true to what your ship size is. This pink line is actually where you've traveled. So you can see where we spawned in the ship, we parked it, and now we're backing up. Um, when you do save and exit the game, unfortunately, it will erase the pink line. So that's a little bit of a bummer because I do like to be able to see where we've gone and why. Um, I'm also very excited to get into hurricane season to be able to see what that's going to be all about as well. So we are far enough out here. I'm just going to give it some forward thrust here. And we're going to start our clockwise spin here in this turning basin to uh, get ourselves pointed in the right orientation. So we'll put it about 50 on each and then it becomes a battle and a battle of watching your speed now this turn you could have a little bit of movement forward or backwards um, this one unfortunately will run away from you <laughs> very quickly so it does take some uh, sit and find out unfortunately uh, to be able to do it so yeah this uh, this is awesome this is awesome already. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, very pleased. Um, and let me know if there's any ships that you guys want to see. Um, I know that I'll be doing Carnival Celebration, obviously all the Disney ships. Uh, Princess Cruise Line has some great ships that are out here as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that'll be fun. See how it quickly went up to half a knot. So let's bring that down. Working with the ship since we are actually going at a pretty good speed right now, I'm actually going to... The range that I kind of would set this up would be 64 is probably the max that I'd go at. Um, at some point, I'll show you what the 100 looks like uh, and why it's just completely unrealistic. And even right now, this is a little bit faster than what it normally would be for a turn. But again, there was so much of my explaining at the beginning of the video, I want to make sure that... You guys can actually see us leave. <laughs> Sorry, getting a little distracted here on my end. It's one of those things I, I get into this like zen moment of just being able to control the ship. I forget that I'm actually supposed to be making a video for you guys. Um, so a couple of the other things that I've seen out there. Again, it's not a huge community at this point. It's very niche. Um, there are some other cruise lines out there that people have made that unfortunately are not um, as high quality. But again, if you want to drive a certain ship, if you want to sail a certain ship, um, there are some that are out there. They're just um, very weirdly hard to find. Um, 
There's not, unfortunately, like a Steam Workshop or anything like that. There are DLCs that come with this game um, that you can buy. I wouldn't recommend it. It's just giving you a handful of boats and a handful of, of ports, but I didn't find that anything that I, where I wanted to go. If I was just going to be doing like container ship and I didn't care about going to certain destinations, <clears throat> yeah, all for it, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, but unfortunately, um, mods were the way to go for me. One of the things that we have to do a lot, unfortunately, at least what I have to do, is oh man, we're dropping 21 frames per second. You you can relatively easily change that. Just so you know, if you come in here to graphics. I have mine up a lot. If I turn off the waves, you see I just go up to a beautifully smooth 60 frames per second. But look at the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to have to fight with San Diego for now. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, and just be happy with it. I was too busy playing with graphics. I wasn't paying attention. Don't want to drift too much further. Don't want to get ourselves into the pier there. All right, two forward. As we're still wrapping ourselves around just a little bit. Ella, there's nothing in there. She keeps going to everybody's bowl and licking it. It's driving me nuts. She's not hungry. She thinks she's hungry. She's she's not. <laughs> All right, with our turn complete, I can actually pop ourselves back in here to the bridge and see if I'm kind of lined up for what I would like to be able to do. So, something that I will show you, I'm just gonna hit A for autopilot. You'll see now that we're on the Disney Wonder. It says what ship we are on, and here's all of our pieces here. Um, <clears throat> you can turn off certain ones if you wanted, like if I just wanted to stay at a certain speed, I could. Um, but right now I'm actually going to turn it on. I'm gonna bump the speed up to 12 knots just so that we're able to see it, because I want to show you a handful of different components. And this video has been going for a little while anyway. So you'll see that the ship itself will get itself up to 12 knots. Let's jump outside. It does spawn you in the water. You do have to pick up the camera. But look at us sail. Beautiful, right? Yeah, that's what I think. All right. So speed up time. It usually would show up down here, but I have that selection off. I'm going to times two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is now at ten times real speed. We are still moving at 12 knots in the sim. Time is calculating appropriately anyway, so you can see how it jumps. So this just speeds up to ten times uh, real speed. And we should have, we have water displacement on, right? Boop. Boop. Yeah, displacement's there as well. So, if it was a little bit calmer, you'd be able to see a ship ripple. Um, with being able to see the waves, it will give it a little bit more of a bumpy ride than normal. It's a little choppy here anyway. You can see that the autopilot is keeping the speed. <clears throat> it is also keeping us on course. Um, I realize they must be off. We, we usually have little buoys that you can actually see us for our autopilot <coughs> that would tell us, oh, hey, here's this. Let me actually see if I can bring one up. I realize I'm, I'm talking about it. I might as well show you. There it is. So it puts these little orange buoys here, and at night they blink, uh, which is pretty handy if you want um, a guided autopilot, meaning you're, you're going to use the buoy system so you know where you have to go, but you're able to actually see it. So we are sitting here. We departed at four o'clock. It's been about ten minutes since our. It's been about twenty because we had we left a little early um, from our original departure. And we're gonna pop up here. And usually up here there'll be people uh, saying goodbye to the ship on both sides. Uh, even though this is a military base. So what we'll do is we'll slow it down to real time. Which again, beautiful, mm, beautiful. And let's do our other favorite thing to be able to do. Click on Y. You can see where the frames are starting to go up now that we're getting away from such a dense area. Let's go to Wish Announcement. Since we are not at the sail away, we need to let everybody know, hey, we are going to be sounding the horn. You're going to hear it. It's going to be loud. So shoot. 
or enter. This is the duty officer speaking from the bridge. We'll be sounding our ship's horn from the forward funnel. For those of you on the open decks at this time, you may want to cover your ears. Again, we'll be sounding our ship's horn from the forward funnel. And for those of you that are on the open decks at this time, you may want to cover your ears. Thank you for your attention. So just like that, you'd give it a couple seconds and I can either hit enter or shoot. And we are officially leaving San Diego to head out to sea. And this starts our very first voyage here with Virtual Sailor Next Gen and the Disney Wonder. So let's pop that speed up a little bit. You are able to pop up to ridiculous speeds. One of the things that I, I will say, I turned it off, but I'm like, man, I'm actually kind of missing it at this point is not the labels. Oh, uh, labels actually could be helpful if you really wanted them. Here's, we have 342 miles just to I. We have a thousand, like a thousand miles to go. <laughs> so we'll pop that off. Um, there we go. So this console down here, it can be a pain in the butt to have in the way, but it does let you know it's sim rate. Um, for being able to sail and be able to keep things happy, there's a couple things that I would recommend, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I would tell you to bring down the wind. So you have a little bit smoother of a ride, or it can get really jostling very quickly for you because the buoyancy is a little wonky with the ship. So you can see that we still got a little bounce, but it's something to keep an eye on. I also recommend keeping it at 21 times. If you're doing a major crossing, uh, such as through here, or across one of the oceans, I recommend, um, you can go probably as fast as you want. The problem is, is that when you load in or out of a map, which is like here, like these are two different maps, when I load into it, when the ship crosses this line, it has to load really quick, because it needs to figure out, okay, I'm not in that map anymore, I'm going to this main one. With that, if you're going too fast, your ship will not spawn right back in the water, and it will literally hit the water and flip over. So you really got to be able to keep that in mind. So we keep it about 21%. You can see California starting to dip there in the, in the rear, off to our stern. And we've got the bow pointed towards the ocean for five days uh, for this Baja cruise. So that's, that's really exciting. That's pretty cool. Um, and I'm really happy to be able to have this with you guys. Uh, I do want you to be able to see the shift from day to night. So since I'm still in this zone and I know that I'm going to be, I'm going to turn it up to 31 times. I will say there is something nice about every once in a while. Just bringing it down. Now that I'm out of the harbor, I actually do need to get us up to full speed. Because I was like, huh, there's not a lot of displacement. Oh, well, we're not moving a ton. That's why. So, that's why I mean, but th this is just one of the most peaceful things sometimes, is just to sit here and just enjoy the ocean. You can see the displacement a little bit. There she be. Let's speed her back up. Oh yeah, you can definitely see it now. Great. We're at our cruising speed. You can see that it's at 22.2. We have that once in a while. Sometimes you just gotta poke at it. It'll jump up, jump down, depending on the wind. But let's pop that back up to 21%. Watching that, it's at 5 o'clock. Of course, we're getting closer to summer, so it means longer nights. You can see just a little bit of California still visible as we sail through the afternoon and into the night. I don't know if I like that displacement enough. Keep it, to be honest. Hmm. But again, you have this vast ocean, more or less all to yourself. Um... I will probably once in a while spawn other ships in um, at certain ports. You know, most ports have generic, you know, cargo ships and stuff like that. We might put some more things in it to add a little bit more life. Let's speed that time up. I don't know, about 41. We, we, we won't pop out of here in this episode because we'll be able to see it. But I'm telling you. How cool is this? <laughs> At least for me. All right. So we'll see you guys as it gets a little bit later. 
I'll check back in. I'll do a cut here. It's going to be a while until the sun really starts to set. It's starting to, but it's got a little bit more time in this overcast guy. All right, so we have sped ourselves up. I actually reloaded in the weather. I was hoping maybe some of the overcast as we got out here would go away, but this is an overcast time uh, out here. And it's one of those things that was very interesting thinking about. So I, 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 I redid the waves as well, and we've been struggling to keep 22 miles an hour because, again, it's such, um, such a rough sea. And I realized it sways. The ship still sways with this, but it sways more when you speed up the screen. So it's it's a little bit harder to get used to. Um, to, to kind of find a fine balance of, do I want to see it jumble when we're going fast like this? Or would I rather have it on Kime Cs? But to be honest, I kind of like it like, like this. Uh, I just put it up to 61. Just trying to get to that sunset moment. But look at this. Look at this beauty. The sun just setting here on the starboard side as we head down towards Mexico. And again, just a nice reminder, if you fall in the water and you watch the ship sail away, that you're doomed. Um, so that's fun. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's, let's, let's finish setting that sun, shall we? Just so we can get the lights on. But again, autopilot will take us uh, all the way down there. You just gotta kinda monitor it and really look at it and make sure that, yeah, I'm still going in the correct direction. I'm just making sure that I'm not going to pop out while we're going a little bit faster than I'd like it to. You can see the sun there just barely getting ready to dip below the clouds. Man, tells you that spring and summer is coming. There, nice twilight effect. The clouds do move. Um, it is supposed to keep us with real weather. I do have that. Um, but I've never actually seen it change because I don't know if I've ever actually traveled into a storm or not. So now we're getting here. It's starting to get really dark. Popped ourselves up onto the bridge. And, of course, a bridge always works in the dark, but here it will turn on the light. Um, it starts to get really dark. So I believe, let's pop that down. It is time to turn on the lights. Just like that, shift L, you can see everywhere has lit up from the glass to the portholes to even parts of the lifeboats area lights up. One of my favorite things, again, is the Disney Wonder insignia uh, lighting up. A couple areas in the coves lighting up. The funnels are funky to me, but, you know, just to be able to show you guys what turns on, what turns off. Pools and stuff like that. Stuff that you want highlighted. But that'll be our cruising through the night. We have a day at sea tomorrow, but in the next episode, we will see you at docking time. Well, I guess it's anchoring time here at Cobo St. Lucas. So, with that, that's going to do it for this one, guys. If you enjoy what you saw, we do try to get a video out here every single day, and I promise we are trying to get back into that. I know there's been a lot of dropping the ball on that, and there's nobody to blame but me. Um, I've just been having so much going on that my brain is not in the right spot to keep on dropping videos, but I promise we will get there. So that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed what you saw, of course we've got new videos coming, definitely more of this playlist, and I hope that you guys enjoy. But with that, I thank you guys so much for coming out to this one, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.